Okay, cool. I hope it's gonna kill this one then. Let's see. Hi everyone. I think we're back on live. Um, sorry for that slight interruption in the broadcast. I think um, Sistimelo is having a couple of connectivity issues. You know, this technology thing is a bit of a mission. Um, yeah. So we decided to switch over um, and switch sort of back. So I'm back on the screen today. Um, and yeah, so we we do want to just kind of pick up where we left off um, chapter three of Sisters of the Yam, which is um, work make like work makes life sweet. So um, yeah, Sister Me, do you want to? Um, I know we've kind of done a, a short, quick introduction to the topic, um, uh -huh. and. I don't know if there's anything that you would like to add because I know you wanted to kind of add and open up the the topic a bit more before we got cut off. Uh, I'm a th okay, okay, okay. Um, whew, okay, let's breathe, let's breathe. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think um, maybe let's maybe start off with um, work when you are because a lot of it, I mean, a lot of the chapter talks about, the gist of the chapter is about um, doing work that's fulfilling, right? Yes. Um, and she put a like, belt on the backdrop of work that, um, oh, hey, hey, Billy, I see you. Doo -doo, welcome back. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So um, she puts it on the backdrop of um, work, um, work that is fulfilling, um, as compared to work that is for money and status. Yes. Right? I mean, we come from from backgrounds where, and I'll talk about my family background. Um, um, on, on my dad's side of the family, we have like, all the ladies were domestic workers and all the guys were teachers, right? Mm. Because of the time in which they went into their careers, right? And what was happening in the country and everything. And then on my mom's side, we have everybody before my mother was a teacher everyone like literally even my grandmother and my grand and my and my grandfather yes. they were all in teaching and then my mother went into law and then my uncle um went into medicine mm. and the two my mother and my uncle were like highlights of the family right sure um and i mean as you're growing up, you ask them, you know, did you do it for love? Did you do it? You know, and my mom definitely did not do it for love. She did it because at when she she when she came up, it was available. Law was available and she was just like, Yay, I am going into law. Yes. And I mean the one before her, her that could have warned her and told her, you know, the dynamics of being a female in law or being black in law at that time or you know, everything that she's gonna be dealing with. Um but then with us it's a bit different um i mean yeah i mean then they they projected that that whole you need to do something that's gonna um put you in a position where you are okay you know where you have enough where you you're able to put away money for your kids where you know um and so they, they instilled that in us and then a lot of us i know a lot of my peers did their first degrees for their parents mm. a lot. i don't know yeah um, I had that where a lot of my friends were just like their first degree that I did in the sciences was for my parents. My parents wanted me to be a doctor. They wanted me to be an engineer, but actually I'm a musician, right? Mm. I'm a painter. You know, this is what I do. I'm, I'm a poet. Um, and my parents would never have uh, allowed me to do that. So then, I, yeah, I just wanted to then get into, you know, doing the, the hardness of doing work that fulfills you. You know, which is which is you know um, the art. I think for me, like, do if I was to now leave my job and go and write full time, mm. um, you know, what are the dynamics there? What what does that look like? What what does it mean, right? And maybe you can come in because you and yeah, my girl here is is an author. She writes, so please. <laughs> um. It's really, uh, it's interesting that we, 
we often times juxtapose um, our creative pursuits with the pursuits that we have to kind of go into maybe in corporate or in um, the public sector. And so my personal journey with work was that I, I studied fine art. So my first degree was in fine art, um, yeah. which was a battle even to get to the point where I could convince my parents that that's what I wanted to study. Because, like, you know, it was um, the thing that was always said was, you know, how can you eat art? Like, you can't eat art, you know? No, you can't. Um, yeah. And so the arc of my career was interesting because, so I started in the fine arts and then I moved over into kind of arts journalism, um, art, fine arts reporting, and that evolved into hard news, investigative news reporting and editing, and then um, eventually PR and communications. So it was an interesting arc. And a lot of the decisions that I made, I think because of my career, especially the move from being an artist, artist in the pure sense of the word, a creative in the pure sense of the word into a creative slash corporate career was because I had kids and I had to feed my kids. And the uncertainty yeah. of um, maybe I'll sell work, maybe I'll get something published. It was a very difficult place to be in. Um, uh. And what ended up happening is that I put a lot more, of course, a lot more um, energy and thought and effort into my PR and comms career, which in itself was good and I learned many amazing things. However, the creative side of my life and the healing kind of side of my life and the, that, that side of my life, yeah, it got it got squeezed and got relegated to the back seat, which was harmful in the right. long run. Uh, no, I hear you. I mean, I, oh, <laughs> I hear what you're saying because I mean, I have I have like um, a plan, right? Uh, um, and I mean, this page is part of it. Um, so the tagline to this to this page is "I read for a living," mm. and that that. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to remind myself with this page that I want to get back, you know, that this is what I want to do with my life. I want to sit um, for long hours in my house and not worry about, you know, how are we going to be eating and, you know, what, what what's going to be paying the school fees and things like that. Um, and just read and just write and, and, and do, you know, meaningful work, work that, that, that does something to my spirit, you know? Yes. Um, but, I mean, it, it becomes all that much harder, especially when you're now a parent, right? Um, because at some point in my life, I wanted to like, I had this whole other plan that I'm going to live 54 years of my life, um, spending a year in different African countries and volunteering as a team. What a dream. <laughs> And then you think about this child that you got, because my son was really four at the time. Mm. Um, and it's like, I'm going to be dragging this child along. Um, he's going to be having to make friends every year, go to a different school every year. You know, I mean, it's a life experience. Um, but then also you read up on, on, on the lives of people that have lived in different states that have gone and, you know, made lives in different places because their parents were working and, 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 mm. and a lot of them say, you know, that a lot of their lives they were being dragged through, you know, um, and you don't want that. You don't want that. So you stay, right? You stay and you get that job and that job pays the bills and you've got the house and you've got the car and you've got all those things. But deep down, deep down inside, when you go to bed at night, you know that something is different. Yes. You know that, you know, that a chapter that you could have written, you know, that, that you know, those lyrics that you could have written are there somewhere floating in the universe and you just, you didn't harness them. You didn't bring them out. You didn't put them on paper. So, yeah. I wonder, I wonder, and this is a question that I ask myself and I'm asking to you and, and the, the, the readers who've joined us as well this morning is, 
is there a way to balance those two kind of pursuits you know the the kind of uh very structured maybe corporate job that pays the bills and feeds the kids and pays the mortgage and the fuel and keeps the lights on etc and is there a way to yes to do that and excel at that and also um create space for the work that gives you meaning and speaks to your actual purpose and your soul your soul's mission if i can you know call it that it sounds a bit airy fairy but like you know um but it's cuz cuz i know i know that i i don't want to give up my pr work like i don't want to give up my work in the media at all because i i have found i have found joy i have been able to carve out a space in that where i enjoy doing that work um i also want to make sure that even as i do that work i don't remove or kill the creative the healing the prophecy you know that i've that's you know that's a gift that i have that i also would like to give space to so i don't know if anybody if you do melo have any kinds of like cuz you do a lot girl i'm going to tell you now that i like that you work you're studying you're managing the a red black girl page you're parenting and i'm i'm saying like you know i'm a fan girl for you <laughs> how on earth are you able to um create space and make space for all of these pursuits you know um, before I come in, I just want to make space because I see. Um, I I know I Billy was here on um earlier, and he's in the arts, and I you know it, when I'm looking at his work, I feel like he does. Um, he does. Um, he, what he does, you know, because he's like in performance arts. Um, he also has a book out. Um, he was my you. What do you call it? The lecturer. Um, when I was at the Market Theatre last year, um, he was our instructor, mm. and he does, he, you know, he's done amazing things. So maybe he can come into the comments and tell us, you know, how he's balancing everything. If, if because the question is asked, right? Yes. Is, is, is money paying the bills? Yes. Are able to live that life, right? Because I mean, a lot of us are thinking that we are um, swapping that um, artistic life for a life where we are able to pay the bills. Um, but just um, just to come back and, and say, you know, I thank you for recognizing that I can do a lot, but, mm. but the truth is, I don't feel like I'm doing any of that properly, right? Because I feel like because a lot, I am not able to, like, you know, hone in to the one thing that I actually want to do. Mm. Um, and and sometimes it's just a coping mechanism because I, you know a lot of people come in and say oh my god you're doing three different courses with three different institutions you know how are you doing that and it's just because um <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna come in um and say to my friend it's like it's okay. so i have a lot of people. i'm generally just a very specific person and because i am it's interesting because right now I've chosen to put it into I'll put it into and the only way I know for fact that I get into like finish something that is long term like a three year degree like I'm doing is do other things while I'm doing that three year degree. Doing like small courses that are related to so that my head are enhancing uh, what I do, right? Um, for example, what I was doing at the Mark. So I'm doing a a, a a a degree in theory of literature and African languages. And what I was doing at the market theatre, like um, introductory course in um, um, performance arts and theatre. And mm. I would I want and and when 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 they asked us that first week, why are you doing this course? And if my answer was because I want to be a better storyteller, mm. right? And that back to the whole the bigger picture that. I'm trying to do all these things and fit them in somewhere, but 
they are related. Um, um, yeah, oh, I don't see, do you see any comment? I don't see any comments. I don't but, see um, any comments yet either on my side. Um, yeah. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, once, and I'm hoping, um, yeah, I'm hoping that um, whoever's online with us is able to also share like how they've been able to balance their um, sort of careers, the the bill paying part of their work with the kind of purposeful soul mission part of, of their work. And you know, sis, sometimes those things are actually the same thing, you know? They, <laughs> I, there are the people yeah. in the world who are blessed enough to be able to live their purpose, do their life's work, and be able to make a livelihood out of that work, you know? Um, and Dudu's, Dudu's just commented, um, and I'd really like to, to go in and read what she's, what she's written. Um, yeah. Dudu says, I studied communications, specializing in advertising and PR. I've always wanted to write though. I've always been a writer, features and essays. My first job was in the media, assistant editor of a lifestyle magazine here in Botswana, where she's based. Um, then after that, she moved on to, I moved on to radio, media, news reading, and eventually PR at agency and local tourism organization. Then in the throes of, a, of a, um, addiction life, I couldn't keep a job. Long story, scene. In my resurrected life, I now am really trying to work, doing things that I love doing. It was hard to rejoin yeah. work life, but I think God made it that way so that I run my business making natural cosmetic products from indigenous plant-based ingredients. I also am led to do communications work, consulting, blog, um, writing a blog, and I also want to work in agriculture on my farm. I pray for the wisdom oh. to do these things. The formal job work life doesn't suit me i pray to be able i pray to continue to follow the things that bring me joy so that work can make my life sweet i hope the money will follow because i've got kids to feed <laughs> you're right uh, you know is that not poetic did she not write it so poetic i love it i love it so much and one of the things that i love the most about it actually that kind of sparks my own, like it, it's very inspirational, is that the way that Dudu is looking at work um, in that she's looking at it sort of sort of backwards in that um, she wants to do the work that makes her happy and then the money will follow, yeah. you know? And I love that paradigm so much because right, just rightly has, you know, as we started um, with the live broadcast and as Bell Hooks writes as well, a lot of the time we um, enter the workforce to make money with money in mind first, um, instead of centering our capability to make a life for ourselves in our purpose. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, do you, would you like to, to add something else as well? <laughs> You. Um, I was just going to say that um, she writes that you, you cannot maintain a spirit of emotional well-being if one is daily doing work that is unsatisfying, that comes with stress, and that gives life little satisfaction. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really, I, I really love what, what Dudu is saying because, I mean, that, that also goes back to, I always um, make the example with my grandmother, who's now 97 years old, um, bless her soul. Um, I mean, my grandmother got married. She tells the story of meeting my grandfather where, like, they met at a dance. She went out to a dance. It, she was, like, on her first job in Joburg working at a, um, as a domestic. And then she went out to a dance. She met my grandfather. The next week, the, my, my grandfather came and wanted to marry her. And then they, like, swooped her, went to the village, um, built her a house. And then she's been living there ever since, mm -hmm. right? So she then never worked another day in her life. But then she farmed. She's like, you know, you could literally say she built her house from the ground up. You could, uh, but all all she's done is live like self-sustained life. Put the house with like grow her own vegetables, grow her own mealies, make her own pap, all over the. And I mean, looking at what. People saying and agriculture and 
I'm, you know, we were talking about how a lot of us went to the other day, the vlog. I mean, yeah, it's part of it's those little things that you do uh, with your life um, that are not conventional, mm. um, but they make, you know, a little happiness. Um, um, and so you get to the point where you're saying, yes, I think I want to work this way and this is what, you know, this is what it, this is what it looks like. Yeah, um, I don't know as well. Like I, I wanted to just ask the the people who are watching because our um, our messenger video keeps kind of cutting out. I'm gonna see if I can kind of scoot over a bit closer to the modem. Um, but I don't know if they if if those who are watching can share whether they managed to get everything that you were saying. Um, otherwise, I may just have to move for the last few minutes. But um, I I I I love that um you know one of the things that I would love to talk about that you just touched on now Dimelo is the work that we do as women as well in the home and to like kind of make and to kind of make a home and to build home and to give us like a sense of home cuz sometimes that work as well isn't like it's almost invisible, you know? It's the labor that we do after we come back from the office as well, you know? Like you go to the office and you come back home and you're still, um, and you're still, you know, you still got to clean and cook and raise the kids and, you know, tend to the husband or the partner, the in, you know, the intimate relationship and, this is as much work as going to the office or uh, you know going to the farm or um but i i also would like to share what lesoho lesoho also shared with us she just commented now and said um so i'm a wife and mother of three toddlers you sister um <laughs> Um, she says, she continues, I started working at age 16 and took any job that came my way. Then I studied a BA in communication and media studies. I only got to start writing full time in corporate, which was last year. I find my purpose in touching people's lives through stories, but I need money more. So whatever I'm doing now is for money. Um, yeah, I like... I can completely relate to that story. I think a lot of us can, hey? <laughs> I think a lot of us can. Mm. I think a lot of um, um, I just wanna, just before I move, I, I wanna get into, um, getting into corporate, right? Mm. And and the, uh, we were talking about that, that mask in the first episode that we did, but the facade that women then put on, um, when they go into college, right? Um, and then they're in management positions. But before I do that, I wanna just, um, I was, when you were talking about the work that we do as women at, at home, I was thinking about my mother. So my mother's an excellent cook, right? Mm. She cooks like, in a meal. And at home when I was small, we used to have this small window the size of a microwave, right? Between the kitchen and the lounge. And she'd be making all these intricate meals and we'd be sticking our heads in there <laughs> and wanting to, and wanting to see how you know why how she does it and she'd always be like no sit there i'm on you know and it'll always like be like such a an adventure sitting there and eating that food and when we were both right <laughs> my mom stopped cooking she was just like i've done this i'm okay you know i've done the wrong you can just you know i am tired <laughs> you know i'm not anymore and i was so broken by that i was just like you can't stop cooking. Like we want to eat, we want to, you know. And she was just like, "Do it yourself. Mm. You know, you can do it." Just. But I was so spoiled. I was just like, I was, and I am a good cook. I promise you, I am not a good cook. Um, I, I do. I, you know, I make do, and my kids don't let me forget the fact that we stop eating meat. So yeah, my oldest is like, ah, you know, if we were at grandmother's house, you know, we'd be first right now right now <laughs> <laughs> so um those little things like they sometimes you see them at work right sometimes you know 
um, like my mother, I feel like she, she saw the cooking as work. Um, but then we saw it as something so much more. Mm. Um, and you had like in different, in different settings, in different literature, especially black American literature, li- literature where you have the, the, you know, uh, the big mama that's there, that's cooking for everybody, that's bringing everybody together, mm. you know, those family barbecues, you know, what food means, you know, how, how they feed, how that, that narrative of feeding the spirit and feeding the soul, um, that that one person that aunt that grandmother that mother will you know have um but yeah i think i want to read do you want do you want to read it the comment from dudu um sure i don't mind reading it but no go ahead you read okay <laughs> so she says it, it is true for me um what it said in the book it is practically impossible well she quotes it is practically impossible for me to maintain a spirit of emotional well-being if one is doing work that is unsatisfying um close quote but fear here though but fear here though i am making my children suffer for my dream and joy chase okay wait i need uh though okay but the fear here though is that i am making my kids suffer for my dream and joy chasing right mm. um so my true friend deep down i trust that they say about following your passion and everything will follow okay so basically she's saying that you know she um she's wondering if she's by following her dream and going into what, what she's doing and you know her life's um desires is she making her children um suffer mm. right me but at the same time she's saying you know i want them to look at me and look at me my life and living my best life and and also have that that thing where they just gonna i'm gonna but makes me oh my gosh gonna you know um yeah and that is so that is so <laughs> because i mean we also have these kids that Girl. are like what his careers like my, you know, MK wanted to be a DJ at some point, <laughs> and now he wants to. Uh, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm literally praying. I'm just like, oh, let him grow over this, like YouTubing. I don't know, right? I but have like, guilt. A- I have actual yeah. parents' guilt that. Yeah. I, I am going to say it. I don't say it to them because that's not. I mean, that's that's a me thing. Um, but I feel comfortable here because it's a safe space. I feel comfortable enough to say that I really do not want my children to go into the arts. Like I don't, (laughs) I don't, and I'm going to say it because it's such a difficult road. Um, and I really, um, what I really want them, like what I really want for them is that whatever they choose, that it be something that they find fulfilling. Um, and yes, of course, I worry that they'll be able, like, you know, about whether or not they'll be able to make a livelihood from what it is that they, um, that they, that they do. And I love as well, Dudu just commented now, and, and, and in her comment, she, she opens with, I loved learning about right livelihood. And, and I, I love that too. Um, I'd love, I'm going to, I'm going to read the rest of it in a bit as well. Um, but I mean, the one, like the one is obsessed with Lego, for example, and I see maybe an engineer or robotics or something in there, you know, and then the other one again is obsessed with YouTube or, you know, he wants to skateboard and it's like, okay, that's cool. Do that. Um, but it's also just this fear that I have that you, yes, they must do what they love and do it excellently. Um, but also like, yeah, this this road that I've chosen, this road of like art and writing, as fulfilling as it is, it's also a difficult road. It can be quite a difficult road. It can be. Um, um I, I totally agree. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Actually, no, no, no. I, I don't agree because I don't know what it is. Because I, I have never not been brave enough to go on that road like so um i just kudos, kudos to you um, <laughs> hold up with the kudos girl <laughs> um but is it okay if i can before we move on to um the topic yeah. that you raised 
I'd love to uh, about you know about the masks or the the armor sort of that we have to put on before going into corporate. Um, just to read what Dudu wrote here, where she says, "I loved reading about right livelihood. It's a new term for me. What has stood out to me a lot is what Bell Hooks says when she says." Um, right livelihood is predicated on high self-esteem and self-trust wow yeah yes. high self-esteem and high and self-trust so this is and, and it's exactly i mean it's, it's it's perfect for what we're getting into right mm -hmm. um so the, she 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 also says that we need to set good examples for for other sisters um with the work that we do. I mean, when we do the work that we love and, and, and we're, we're genuine about it, then we're setting an example for other people that are doing it. And we're saying, and, and we're saying actually it's doable. You know, you, it, it, it's not, you know, we don't have to paint the picture and say it's hard, mm. but it, it's doable, mm. we can do it. Um, and I mean, I wanna um, also talk about, yeah, I wanna just in, on, in that light say that, um, We've been looking at, and I'm, I'm and I'm thinking about, you know, that movie Single Parents, that one character who's in law and was going for partner, and um, she doesn't make partner because she has a child, right? So I haven't seen that like, movie, but it sounds like some nonsense. What happened to the character? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It's like. Yeah, it's like a patriarchal thing. Mm. So they, they give it to a guy, obviously, because he doesn't have a, a child and he's able. And literally, they say because he, he's able to be here, you know, over long hours um, and won't get called into school meetings and things like that. Mm. Um, and so that to the the type of the hardness that we have to take on as women when we go into corporate, right? Mm. When we go into corporate and take managerial positions, and we are there now, you know, looking over ten people and things like that. Um, and 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 I want to bring into the bring it to the context of where I work work in the institution where in the last year we've had like a number of cases where female managers were you know taken to book because they were they were um um you know, what is the word they were like being so hard on the female employees you know they were like abusive Yo. in a in a sort you know? okay um on on employees and it was just a big thing right and and you you're sitting in middle management and you you're looking up to these you know top management women and there are few of them they're literally a handful of them right yes and and they are now because of what is expected of them in corporate you know because they're supposed to be hard they're now doing that whole you know putting the the pressure and being hard on on other black women you know and and you're just like oh my god you know if that's what it means i don't know if i wanna you know mm. get into that i mean we yeah we continually trying to like create these spaces where we're safe where you know yes um, yeah and so, and I, I love that you brought that up because um the issue of kind of heteronormative patriarchal capitalism and the ways in which women have to sort of put on a quote unquote masculine hardness in order to thrive or in order to fit into those spaces. Because I, I don't know whether um, generally that kind of outlook in general for anyone whether you're you know male female queer identity um, uh, non-gender conforming like that kind of hard very capitalist very un sort of unfeeling um abusive kind of uh, style of leadership and style of workplace can be quite toxic and they are what um people have written you know kind of in the leadership management kind of space you know they've they've written articles and i'm sure papers about um adopting a more kind of feminine style of leadership or um uh what people refer to as soft skills side um side of leadership and i'd love um if if we can just to read something that i i read um and, and shared as well on my page that Audrey Lord wrote, um, the uses and of I, the exotic. I have, I actually have three paragraphs that I wanted to read 
from there. Oh my days, you <laughs> see. Yeah, yeah. This is you see. This is why. This is why we 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 we, we gel. <laughs> We're on the same page. So yeah. Um, that thing about adopting a style of leadership that isn't necessarily like hectic, hardline, where we can tap into um the knowledge and the wisdom that we carry, you know, as women, as black women or women of color in any kind of space where we hold a position of leadership. One of the things that she writes says, um, Audrey Lord writes, as women, we have come to distrust that power which rises from our deepest and non-rational knowledge. We have been warned against it all our lives by the male world, which values this depth and feeling enough to keep women around in order to exercise it in the service of men, but which fears the same depth too much to examine the possibility of it within themselves. Yeah. So um, then she also says, so women are maintained <clears throat> at a distant or inferior position to be physically milked much the same way as ants maintain colonies of aphids to provide a life-giving substance for their masters. So I'm gonna stop reading there so that you can share. <laughs> mine is like mine is literally three paragraphs, but you know I I, I love how I love that piece that you because I mean the it's like a whole chapter, right? Yes, it's, it's, it's a bit long, like a lot of themes that she goes into. We'll share it on the page. Um, I shared it last week, but I'll share we'll share it again today, um, so that everybody can read it for themselves. Um, so I I love how she went there's a part where she took, goes into the um using the, the the erotic to to bring forth your softness right mm. um oof, i don't know if i should read it i'm like very conscious of the time um but uh, let me just go into please it. Fine. yeah um, <laughs> so, she, <laughs> so she says finding power in the erotic in our softness and beauty oh no 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 that's a note that i made um, so I, yeah, I made a note and said this speaks to finding power in the erotic, in our soft, in, in our softness, and in our beauty, like we were talking yesterday, in the depths of the connection that we we have with ourselves and with with others, right? Mm. So uh, open quotes. Another important way in which the erotic connection function is functions is the open and fearless underlining of my capac capacity for joy. In the way my body stretches to music and opens into response, hearkening to its deepest rhythms, so every level upon which I sense also opens to the erotically satisfying experience, whether it be whether it is dancing, building a bookcase, writing a poem, examining an idea. Uh, that self-connection shared in a measure of the joy in which I know myself to be capable of feeling, a reminder of my capacity for feeling, and that deep and in ir, and that deep and irreplaceable knowledge that my capacity for joy comes to demand from all of my life, that it be lived that it be lived within the knowledge that such a satisfaction is possible mm -hmm. and does not have to be called marriage. Yeah, so this is like one of my favorite parts, right? So that joy that you find. Um, it doesn't have to be called marriage, um, no God, no an after, right? Um, this is one reason why erotic is so feared uh, and so often relegated to the bedroom alone when it is recognized at all. For once, we begin to feel deeply and all the aspects of our lives, we, we, we begin to feel deeply in all, all the aspects of our lives. We begin to demand from ourselves and from our lives life pursuits that they feel in accordance with that joy which we know ourselves to be capable of. Our erotic knowledge empowers us, becomes a lens through which scrutinize all aspects of our or forcing us to evaluate the honestly in terms of their relative meaning within our lives. Um, so I'm finishing and she says then in the end, and this is a grave responsibility projected from in each of us, not little for the convenience the showy, the conventionally expected, nor the merely um, uh, I love I mean, that. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, I was just trying to keep through. Yeah, I checked <laughs> you like, hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah. No. They said, we have like eight minutes. 
um and i and i, I yeah i didn't want to like hot the whole in, in, um, conversation but um i mean basically what she's saying is that um you know bringing bringing that er- erotic element into whatever we do into our work most more specifically um making it more soft and making it you know things that we making a thing that we enjoy yes. and not not make convenience and and you know a settling you know um or a safe space and we we do that we do that we do that a lot where we're just like oh no i know that you know i'm gonna get that paycheck at the end of the month you know because i'm on this contract or because i'm permanent at work and 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 and, and. Mm. um um but um sometimes work that is fulfilling is the difficult work it's it's the work that um the it doesn't match into the economy right it yeah it doesn't clock into your bank account it doesn't but it, it's work that makes you happy it's work that um yeah it's spiritual work yes yes and i love that you brought the spiritual into it as well because um i think audrey lord touches on it in the same in the same essay um mm. and like additionally you know it's something that i find personal and it's something that i've also kind of um i've i've noticed it in <clears throat> in a lot of women of color in particular and people in general how we like women in particular uh we romanticize suffering and our value like society's way of valuing sort of women and women of color in particular is in our capacity to suffer and how well we bear the weight of suffering and pain and emotional distress and our ability to carry on going despite all of those things and challenges which on the one hand i'll be like yeah sure it's because you know black women are awesome and amazing um also <laughs> why 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 must we suffer like why why mustn't we take pleasure why mustn't we carve out time for ourselves in order that we enjoy our lives and enjoy our space and, and 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 remove ourselves and consciously make it a point to remove ourselves from situations that are not pleasurable for us you know um i'd, I'd love to also oh. just shout out to Thudu, uh and and um uh read the comment that she just shared now if that's okay before we we go on um she she writes um She writes, I wrote an article about the tough women in corporate entitled The Bitch in the Boardroom, commenting on that hard stance of women in corporate when I naively, I guess, thought they could use their position better to nurture the up and coming young woman in corporate. I was always very, very intimidated by them. Also because I'm so different from the stereotype corporate woman. I have too many soft skills, lol. (laughs) Too quirky. I felt like I could never fit in. And when I forced myself to try to fit in, it didn't work out well at all. Misery. I don't know if I'll ever fit in there. These women do have traits I admire as well. Um, And this is, this all is not to say that I don't. Yeah. Yeah, because that powerful, that powerful, like hard bull stance is also like, yeah, like it's also valuable and we can also do the things, you know? <laughs> but you look up to it and you're like, oh man, she's able to get what she needs, right? Yes. She's able to do, she's able to hold a room, she's able to, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but but I, I love how she says, um, she says that she had hoped that they could these women could then um mentor other black women in the boardroom right yes and 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 so how often do you see that i don't see it i will not laugh i see it a lot when it's um when it's i I mean when it's like um black women 
bringing up the black women. I see, I've seen with black women, guys, mm. definitely. Um, but I don't see a lot where it's black women bringing up other black women. And we know that there is a little bit, there are like a lot of, um, uh, there's a, and that hope for, and yeah, it's just it's for, and so we would think for, it's not good with the the self and self practice you you're, you're like okay with who you are and you're okay with what you're giving yeah yeah um i'm i'm sorry sis i think it was it was cutting out a bit um i um, m my connection may be a bit wonky but i think maybe what i can share what, what i what i heard especially towards the end of what you were sharing was that you know you know black women we don't have any trouble kind of uplifting even black men like that's something that you've seen um and that's an experience that you, i mean that you've seen um in the workplace and that um when one is secure in themselves, they have no problem in uplifting another person. Um, and I, I love that you said that so much because again, it comes back to that thing of self-care, self-nurturing, self-compassion, being gentle with oneself, self-belief, and the ability to then um, share that with others and uplift others you know, because there's a generosity um, that one is able to have when your when your own cup is full, then yeah. it's not a problem to like like when the cup overflows, it's just like you get some love, you get some love, you get information, you get a connection with um, a manager, yeah. you know, you get an opportunity to go to a conference. Like it, yeah, it it opens it opens. Um, the way um uh, for young people as well like just coming up you know yeah and, and it also paves paves that way for truth sharing you know i mean um if we're more if we're that open then then it also you know translates to being able to take more of the truth you know and digest more of the truth and deal with more of the truth because um a lot of the things that um us women also tend to shy away from um, with regards to other women is that we know because we're in those shoes, right? We're wearing those shoes. We're wearing those stilettos too. So <laughs> we know what you do. So if you're sitting here and you're like, um, you know, saying to yourself, be able to be like, girl, you know, that is not it, right? If that is not it. We know to go through the Yes. So sometimes are not wanting to hear the truth and not wanting to deal with the truth that keeps us from bringing each other up and sharing spaces with each other. Oh, I love that so much. Um, and, <clears throat> and despite myself and wanting to go on, I, I don't know what you think. Um, I, I don't know if there's any, if there's any, anyone who would like to maybe share like a, like a closing kind of comment or share an experience in closing because uh, I think our hour is pretty much up now. Um, yeah, I think too. <laughs> and we agreed, we agreed, so let's not be selfish. <laughs> we agreed that we're going to keep it to the hour. To the hour. So um, I'm just going to, um, I mean, the comments can just, can also come in, in later on. Sure. And we'll share, I've shared the video link to Audrey Lord's um, talk and also the the, the PDF Um and I've also asked Dudu to share that piece about the beach pitch in the boardroom. Yes, please. So, um, please, please, we want to read that. Um, and I'm going to just say thank you. Um, I know we were, talk we were talking um, yesterday after the talk that, you know, this work that we're doing, um, is, is, it tends to be hmm. so, it, it so, so deep. So, so deep. We are the things that, that, um, on the norm uh, some of us would not bring out so um i'd like to just thank everybody that is is in the space and everybody that allows that we speak things that, that the stories that are coming through you know that we are also taking in um, um yeah just thank you 
thank you so much and goes well for um, yeah, and that's it for me. Um, thanks, Dumelo. Um, yeah, I just want to also add, and I'll keep, like, mine is short. Um, I'm really grateful as well for this community uh, and the work that we're doing is hard. So uh, on that note, just to say, like, take a moment, even if it's, like, half an hour to just look after yourself. Like, do something that gives you pleasure, whether it's eating a fruit or reading or sitting in the sun or being in the garden, like whatever, or even just, yeah, like like whatever gives you pleasure for half an hour, please let's just do that, just today. <laughs> yeah, do that because a lot of us don't, don't have the, the pleasures now of being alone, alone, mm. right? So just at 30 minutes and just do something that you love yourself on your own you know even if it's just breathing mm. you know mm. do that awesome um, so yeah awesome cool thanks, thanks. bye everyone <laughs>